Hello. <clears throat> hey. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's, it's early in the morning in your time zone. Yes, I'm in California. So. Oh. Okay, so. How are you? Uh, I'm from Austria, so it's evening in my time zone. So. Yes. Yeah, my daughter was in Budapest, so I used to track that type of time zone for a while. The COVID stuff uh, brought her home. So. Okay. So let's wait up in a few minutes if someone, let's see if someone trains. Um, I post the link to the channel. Oh, hello, John. Hey, um, everyone. I think we. I think we can start. Um. So I'm Omer. I'm part of the co-chair of the this working group. Thomas is another co-chair here, and Jennifer is the third co-chair. Uh, she had some. Uh, maintenance at home, so she doesn't have uh, internet right now. 
Um, what we'll do today is, as usual, short introduction and then talk about our draft question and desk assignment. Uh, before we start, John and Holly, show to pronounce it, and I froze, right? Um, yes. Um, so I'll continue. <laughs> um, to... <laughs> okay. I'll um, bring that to... <laughs> Um, it's a lot. It's a very long line to Omar sometimes. Um, so he so he freezes at some point. Um, yes, hello. Um, at first, I think so. Hi, you are, you are new here, aren't you? Yeah, this is the first time I'm attending this. Um... Yes. Um, and Greg, um, do you want to introduce yourself shortly? so that we know uh, uh, and give us uh, an idea um, what you expect from our working group. You want me to go first? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so I work at a company called Infoblox. Um, we do have an open source project, um, Infoblox Open. You can go look at that body of work. Um, we're uh, used to be a public company, but now we're a private um, PE firm um, owned. Uh, and uh, we have had traditionally an on-prem uh, solution uh, in the DDI space, but for about last four years, I've been working on our SaaS solution, uh, which um, as you would expect, you know, is a cloud uh, native application. We built it from ground up. Um, we have something like over 200 microservices um, and a lot of tooling for it is on the open source project because when we started the project, um, you know, on Twitter and but if you were writing Java, you know, or Node or some of those uh, more or Ruby, there were some toolkits available, but for Go at the time, uh, there wasn't anything. Uh, so it's... Uh, a lot of toolkit elements are open sourced uh, by us, although we don't evangelize it or anything like that. But you know, since we wrote it, uh, we put it out there. Um, and so we've also been on this journey of kind of building the um, CICD tooling. Today, um, today we use Spinnaker for our uh, pipeline. We've been using Spinnaker for about mm, over two years in production. And uh, in the new target state that I'm working on, we want to migrate to um, a Kubernetes native environment. We've gone through the whole, you know, Docker, Swarm, um, Mesos, Kubernetes journey as well in that four years. Um, but we've always been cloud uh, uh, container-based architecture. So, but but different um, orchestration uh, piece underneath. Um, and so we want to migrate our pipelines. Um, and we've done a lot of POCs around um, a lot of Argo projects. Today we use Argo workflow for uh, our uh, TI pipelines. Um, looked at Argo CD, um, Flux, Flagger, Rollout. We've written our own uh, operators. Um, we're heavily influenced by the work and by the backstage uh, community in terms of the end-to-end -end pipeline, uh, you know, that kind of a declarative way to define the apps and the overall life cycle, everything from creating it to monitoring it to, um, so that's kind of a target state for us to get to. And so I, we just see this, um, what I couldn't, what I call an application operator um, as kind of a critical piece of that. Um, and so, we do have projects that um, are using, you know, the various um, everything from the group builder to the S, um, operator SDK and 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 others. So um, so that's kind of give you an overview of our company, myself, and kind of the overall target state that we're trying to get to. And, and so uh, I've I've been attending the uh, application uh, working group. And so when this got started, I thought that I would at least, um, you know, 
and I, it's been on my list, but my mornings are filled uh, with uh, scrums and, and meetings. So this today I didn't have anything blocking me from attending. So I thought I would I would attend. So. Yes, right. nice to have you here. And thank you for the introduction. Um, yes, we are very, very short, short, uh, uh, small, uh, sorry, not short, but small working group. Mm -hmm. um, we are dealing with operators. One of our main goals currently is to get uh, to to write a white paper about operators so that um, um, users, end users, and all, but also developers of operators know what you can do with operators and um, mm -hmm. what you what you can take care care of and so on. Um, yes, this working group, I think we are one year old. Uh, okay. Around. The most, the most recent operator we wrote that's open source actually is a cluster operator that we wrote mm -hmm. because one of the goals we have is to be able to declaratively, um, create, uh, clusters on demand. And so we are, we use today, uh, cops in house, um, um, there's a lot of fl um, flux in the company. I mean, around using EKS or using EKS control. And I mean, there's just, and so I, um, our goal was, uh, and there's uh, cross plane. So one of the goals we had was to create an operator that kind of overlays and creates a um, invariant representation of a cluster mm -hmm. uh, that, that we can operate on. And then all the choices we make around kind of what the tooling is underneath. Um, is kind of hidden from uh, us and also it becomes more multi-cloud. So, okay. um, so that, that piece is, um, and so mo mostly in POC right now, but like I said, um, um, so you might like, have a lot of knowledge about operators. Well, like I said, we've written lots of operators so that mm -hmm. I look at it, it's more like a black, uh, bl um, blank canvas. And then, um, you can, kind of do something um I, and i guess the tooling for it like i said over time has gotten better mm -hmm. uh, from the point of view of the, the, the community but uh yes. mm -hmm. okay um so um yes our current state is that we are as, as i said before we are currently writing a white paper um we are currently in a state where we have our first i think our first draft deadline next week um but we don't have enough enough content at the moment. Let's say it this way. So, um, if you want to um, contribute something to the white paper, you are more than welcome. Um, yes. Um, so, yes. Let's start with the, with the rest of the agenda. I think John is also here. I didn't I didn't expect him to come today because it's very early in your time zone. I think. Um, and um, yes, I just uh, I take, took a look over your work currently. It looks pretty nice. Um, have you, do, we, do you have any questions currently or um, do you need some input from our side? No, um, so we're aiming to have this draft wrapped up this week. We were, we were trying to have it done before today so I could mm -hmm. tell you guys excitedly. Um, we both got busy on Friday, last Friday, so we're I'm I'm nearly done with my section. Uh, Cameron's hoping to spend Thursday on it, so um, we should have that uh, in a state pre best review. So I guess the question would be, um, do you want to review it in the, the Google Doc, or do you want me to uh, submit a PR in a markdown format, or, or what's sort of your guys' next step? Um, for us, it would be cool if we uh, if you could um, put it in a in in a pull request. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so we and all of all of the other people could review it. Um, cool. Um, yes, we'll try to we'll try to um, accept the pull request as far, as soon as possible. I've um I've been trying to get more folks interested to to join this working group. I'm not sure if that's been successful yet or not, but I'm I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. It's perfect, perfectly fine. Thank you. We'll also try to make the tasks a little bit more clear, I think. And uh, that's something that came up in the SIG. Uh, we'll view the tasks and make them, make sure they're more easy to pick up uh, when you join us. Okay. 
Um, you were a bit. Uh, uh, How, how, how could I say this in English? Um, I, I could not understand you because yeah, uh, there were there were some some pauses in there. Yeah. Um, um, we will we need to go over the tasks and make sure they are good for new joiners. Uh, I, some of them are good to pick up very easily, some are less, mm -hmm. and we'll do it uh, this week to make sure that if someone is want to join, it's easy to do that. Yes. So the ne next task we'll, we will write will be a bit more clearer and a bit more uh, better defined currently. Um, just for your information, we are, uh, we, Copied everything from a Google Talk, Google Talk to, to Markdown into the Git repository and so on. So um, we we shifted our whole workflow in uh, in between of the of writing the, the document um, to get this a bit more structured and therefore the tasks were not very clear defined. But thank you, John, for for your contribution and thank you uh, and yes. As I hope the security tasks were were defined well enough. Oh yeah, no, it's I'm um a little surprised at Omer's comment. Uh, I I thought it was uh, at least for me it was easy to understand, but maybe for others. Okay, so um yes, we have today we have the nice task of assigning the rest of the tasks. I think um these are these are a lot. Um so at first. Um, so, how do you want to write something for the white paper, or don't, uh, don't you have gotten enough time for such things? Well, I, I was going to start by actually reading it. Um, so, I just pulled up the get site, um, mm -hmm. and I, I was just looking at the body of work. I'm surprised it's not using um, uh, Mark uh, Make Doc. Um, but it's fine the way it's laid out. I'm sorry. Um, MK doc, I think uh, you can you can if you're going to uh, do something like this, might be a way a way to organize it. It's just a typically that's the pattern people are writing um, documents and get. But anyway. I'll, I'll I'll read through the. You have a table of contents. I'll go through and and read. And it sounds like um, mm -hmm. we're generally accepting pull requests for updates, right? Yes. Is there sections that are empty uh, right now, and you want people? Yes, to... there are a whole uh, there are a lot of sections which, which are empty. Oh, okay, all right. Um, so I'll start just by uh, looking at the uh, mm -hmm. the document. First time I'm looking at it, so. Mm -hmm. um, but please, if you um, if you plan to do something uh, to to write something, please contact me or or Omar or, or someone. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then we could block this uh, this chapter. Uh, so we have uh, we we've got tasks in our mm -hmm. our repository, and then we'll assign this, uh, this to you, and and hopefully no no other one will do this. Yes? Okay, yeah, I'll look through the tasks too. Then that's good. Okay. MK docs is for presenting the document in, in HTML, right? Uh, no, it's in Markdown. It just uh, it creates a uh, yeah. doc fold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still marked. Is that something that, What's that will be easy to implement? But do you think it will be easy to implement that in our current repo? Yeah, once you have Markdown, you could essentially just uh, we create a project for documentation and it shows up as a doc folder. The pattern is more for you know uh, having it coexist with other things in because this right now the whole repository is one big document. So let me let me find, um, and there's also um, material version of it for fancier looking uh, UI. Uh, so it's let me find a link to it and I'll I'll put it on the chat. Okay, um, then I think we'll try to um, go over the the current tasks. 
So um, well, let's see. We're aiming to uh, draft <clears throat> as yeah. this month, or I'm sorry. We're aiming for a draft to come out this uh, month, right? Or on next Wednesday to be uh, to be exact. So it's a lot. It's a lot of work for one week. But it's. Uh, well, it's uh, first draft. But I think it's like in like on university. Um, this also worked the worked the whole time, to be honest. Um, okay, then let's go over the tasks and share my screen. Okay. Um, so for everyone who doesn't know this, um, yes, we have we have a lot of document parts, and these are, uh, the, are different Markdown documents. And uh, for almost all of, of these um, document parts, one task in the, in the uh, one issue in, uh, in GitHub exists. We have some tasks which are assigned already, and we have some tasks which are not assigned, and we should do this now. Um, I think uh, Omar, we, uh, we will include Jennifer afterwards, but um, that's no problem. Okay, so um, yes, um, we have we have defined a lot of capabilities an operator can have. So um, you might uh, some of you might know that there are capability uh, that there are maturity models of of, of operators, and um, there are a lot of capabilities defined. And we, as a CNCF project, we didn't want uh, to um, to say that an operator who has capability X is more mature than another one, um, because he uh, he could lack of, of other capabilities. So, right to uh, only to describe the capabilities an operator could have, and. Um, this should give an, an end user or also a developer of an operator an idea of what you can do with an operator. Therefore, we defined a lot of capabilities, um, such as uh, the most obvious one to install an application, to upgrade an application um, seamlessly, and yes, backup, recovery, auto remediation, and so on. And for all of these capabilities, so for the ones which are not written at the moment, there are also exist issues, such like the auto, uh, auto configuration tuning, um, which means that the, uh, that we want to describe that the operator is responsible for managing the uh, configuration of the deployed application. Um, so uh, he might be able to tune application parameters if certain um, um, it exists, so I'm um, sorry. Um, and the customer should be able to tell the operator which, uh, which thing could be auto-tuned and so on. So to keep this short, um, is anyone there who wants to deal with this section? Okay, then it's me. I'll take it. Okay. Okay, then we have auto remediation section. This, uh, this will be, will describe that an operator could could be used to um, yes get get an application uh, get an application to run the state from a from a more, more or less intact state. Um, then we have backup and recovery. This is all uh, this task that I'm done by me. Um, then we have such kind of a of a related work section which. Um, Yes, should should describe which work or, or, already exists. So there is an announcement from from CoreOS where operators are defined and so on. And there are, there are a lot of books of, about operator. And we want to um, we want to give um, readers the possibility to get in, get further information about operators because I think the white paper we will write will will only, will also only handle a part. And um, yes, so that's also a, a thing which will be done by me, I think. 
Okay, then we have summary and conclusion. This is not a real problem now. Um, does anybody, anyone want to deal with the technical application of a uh, technical implementation of an operator? So how can I write, uh, how do I start writing an operator? How can I test an operator? Um, we could this, we could describe all of this um, using on a uh, using a using a demo application if we want, um, and we could give some some example implementation of different capabilities. And but also I uh, I wanted to de describe shortly what what could a uh, hard delivery pipeline for operators could look like. I think we need to change this task. Uh, because we don't really want to run to to have to describe how to write an operator. We have a uh, section about uh, implementations of operators, and and so maybe it's not just a introduction to them. If you want to write an operator, you can use those tools or see those guides. And or well, just just about the uh, the methodology how you could start writing an operator so not not regarding the exact tool set but what should you con consider before you want to write an operator? What you should consider is a better way to to say that I think. But it also big task and maybe we need to split it. I think we won't have a new application now. I'm not sure the white paper is a place to talk about implementation. I think, I think uh, an overview of um, of kind of the landscape in terms of um, what's available and maybe some links to them, I think. And like, I think we just, somebody discussed somewhere, I think just discussed just a high level of how to approach, um, understand the use case. I mean, in some cases, uh, depending on what you want to do, you might want to write a very low level controller um, versus, um, be, because you want more control versus uh, something like Opera SDK, where a lot of the tasks have been abstracted out and you just write a control loop. Um, so, but I think. Um, yes, um, I've, I've changed the task a bit. So um, we should describe on a very high level. So not, not too much in detail. Uh, what should we consider? Where could we start when we when we want to write an operator? So um, this might also include um, find out which tool set fits for you. Um, that then there is something to test operators. Um, I think this this could also be a, a thing which which could be interesting for for some people. Um, then yes, the implementation of different capabilities. I think we could drop this. But also, um, I think kinds of, of delivery pipelines for operators could also be, be interesting to get ideas how such things could look like. So um, we only should make um, it's very it's very late today, so then it's very bad to do now. Um, so um, we sh we should give user users an idea how a delivery pipeline could look like and um, not how they should do this. So um, I think this would this would be um, enough overview for a white paper. What do you think? Uh, or do you agree? Or is anyone anything missing in the technical in the technical thing? Or should we should we read, uh, uh, should we rename the section or include it to the best practices sec uh, section? It feels like this section is like kind of summary for the whole white paper. Uh, kind of the short version of what, because if you read the whole paper, you 
probably know what to consider because you understand what an operator is. So maybe we need to postpone this to after after we have the best practice and more content in other sections. Um, just a second. We also have a best practices section where I think nothing of those um, are in. So there is some kind of um, sometimes um, the placement of operators is discussed. So um, that they are separated from the workloads and so on. Then we have some metrics. Then we have umbrella operators, which are always also uh, sometimes points of discussion. Um, yes, best practices for operating implementation. This could also um, include su such things. Um, yes, then I think I think we will include this uh, this additional. Thing you want to include these things? Also. That thing called umbrella operators, um, we look at them, at least in our system, as being federated. I think that's the term we use for those operators that are managing others. Mm -hmm. um, how do you talk, uh, how do you call them? Um, we, we look at them as being federated. And, and there's already several um, groups working on federation. Uh, you know, at least at Infobox, we have this concept of kind of clusters that are more like for control functions. And, and so they kind of overlay or they, they federate other uh, clusters that are running workloads. So there's that pattern we established. Uh, so, so when, so the, I guess the term umbrella does kind of indicate something over something else, but but anyway, just terminology, I guess. But it's all it's all terminology here. Yes, we talked a lot. Of, we, I think we've discussed half a year uh, half a year to find out what an operator is. Hmm. Yeah, no, but even the term federation means something fairly specific in CNCF. There's a group working on. I think there's at least three groups I know, or three projects, open source projects that are doing federations. So. Okay, um, then I will close this, te this technical implementation thing. Uh, we will remove this section in favor of the best practices section. Uh, if it's okay for you, Omar. I think so. We'll probably need to revise this decision after the first draft. Uh, maybe. We'll decide that there is a place for that, but for now it seems like more content that we might have in other places. Okay, then I will remove this uh, remove this chapter and um, the content will be moved to the to the best practices section. Okay, then we have use cases for an operator. This is more uh, end user related um, um, chapter. Um, this will be done by, Gen uh, by Jennifer. So she, she wrote that she will do this. Then we have, have such funny thing as the lifecycle management of an operator. So um, it's about up updating an operator itself and what do we all. Yeah. Can you zoom in for the your browser? Oh, sorry. Can you zoom in the browser? Yes, yes. Very oh, great. <laughs> oh, it's a bit bigger. Um, yes, I think it's about up updating an operator itself. Um, And every and everything other which could be which could be in this scope. Um, I think uh, this is mainly targeted to operate the lifecycle manager things and so on. 
von dem Nordschulte an, wo wir jetzt mit Stahl und Stuhl aus dem Müller finden. I'm thinking maybe it's a little bit technical talking about auditing an operator. Auditing? Technical. And I'm not sure what updating an operator itself is just updating an application. How can we describe it in a way that um, or we want to say you need to think about versioning your CRD, for example, and how to do that? I think um, this piece is here because there is a uh, operator SDK has a lifecycle management piece. Maybe that's why this was put here just to maybe capture that element that comes with that um, environment. I think uh, Operator CK, I think, is a OpenShift project. And so they have a whole bunch of machinery around managing life cycles. And so. Um, yes, so this section was a bit targeted to this mm -hmm. um, because there is such thing as an operator lifecycle manager. And I think um, users of operators should know what this does or how such life cycles could be managed. But that second bullet is the main problem, not for operators, but in general. Mm -hmm. Once you have CRs and Kubernetes, you know, there's no good way that Kubernetes uh, allows you to manage them. They're not managed elements in the system. And then so it's almost like, I wouldn't say like, very implementation specific, how you go about managing CRs. And so we have a lot of, you know, so that's that's an area we deal with uh, both for our, our normal applications as well as any operators we have is just uh, uh, almost they're not being, they, they can't be managed um, as part of the application. They just need to be treated as their own kind of uh, resources. So that's kind of, the problem today. So. Yeah. Okay, so um, does anyone want to deal with this section, cap chapter, or whatever this will be at the, in the end? I can uh, try to load it, but I'm, I, yeah, so. It's, it's um, like I that last section we talked to on implementation. It seems like it, it, um, it, I don't know that you could you could, um, as part of a white paper, really um, work on it unless um, okay. unless you almost pick the implementation and then you could maybe drill down. Awesome. Well, this was this one. Um, so try to get. Uh, we should try to get some 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 uh, some sections on this. So one, two, or three, or four, and um, we'll see afterwards in the draft if we need this or if we could, if we could drop this, or if we uh, or if this will be discussed very roughly roughly during the reviews, and if there is additional things to consider. Okay, then we have operator frameworks for non Kubernetes platforms. Um, do we want to deal with this? Because that, uh, that's explicitly um, not in our, in our scope in the, in, the, in, the, in the charter as far as I've seen. I also think that we, the section where we're talking about operators in general and not related to Kubernetes is enough. And we don't have examples for non Kubernetes platforms operator. Oh. Not that we know about them. Okay. Um, then that's the same thing as the as the technical implementation chapter. I will drop this and remove it from the from the white paper. 
okay, but we have operator frameworks working on this. And I think we have to, uh, there are two, two operator frameworks described at the moment. The moment. So this is Kopf and Cube Beetle. Um, I think we should create an issue for describing the operator is the okay. What do you agree? Yeah. We will probably find someone who is part of the team. Yeah. So this is a, I should only give a rough overview, not a detailed uh, uh, description how this, how this can be, can be used. So then this is uh, right click from. Okay, then it's a bit this. Um, and uh, I'll add the new tasks to the, uh, so I, I will post them on the Slack channel today. Yeah, I think we had some people from Operator SDK along the way, so I hope they were in the channel, but if not, we can find them. Okay. And a uh, second thing I want, I would like to have in the white paper is, um, I think, what is it called? Kudo. Um, so let's let's try to find out if someone wants to write an operator about, about Kudo. Uh, and, and description about uh, Kudo. Um, this is also open to five people. This is also this project. Okay. It's also submitted. Okay, so these are the these two sections. Um, are you aware of any other operator frameworks we should write a description for? I know. Okay. Um, yes, I will take the overview task for this. Oh, this is this one. Okay, um, and then we'll write the executive summary in the end. So um, I think we will give this task to Jennifer, if it's okay for you, Omar. Yeah. And, 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 and. yes, I think these were all of the, all of the, um, um, this uh, um, assigned sections currently. So, um, yes, we have a section about auto, auto configuration tuning. I think I'll try to, to try to do this. And this will be it. Um, okay. So, um, so, I, so, I, um, if you want, you can, uh, you can add something, uh, some, some chapters or sections to the white paper. But please, uh, please don't hesitate to ask us if you if you have questions or if you mm -hmm. want to uh, to have some sections assigned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to read it more. I'm trying to understand the big picture that this thing is painting. Yes. Because, like I said, in our environment, um, like I would like to see if there's like a some sort of conceptual data model of how you think uh, you see the environment. You know, how does the operator operate on it? Like, um, you know, like, a, a, um, you know, we look at some things like, like I talked about, like 
our Argo rollout or Flagger as already being application operators. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is, um, do I start with that and enhance them? In other words, or do I build my own? When I build my own, does a single operator have a concept of multiple application CRs that it manages, or is it one to one? And I mean, those are all kind of like things that I would think that I'm, I'm going to read through. And but I mean, those are in my mind kind of fundamental things that I start with always and say like, okay, then I can go down. And so, a lot of what we were looking at were like the uh, leaf nodes. Okay, I'm just trying to read. Alex, I'll I'll read the document. You guys have been working on it for a while, and I'll try to get the big picture, and then mm -hmm. where appropriate, yeah, I will sign up and, and contribute. So. Okay, great. Uh, we have some section while we're talking about the concepts of operator in general, uh, so that will be good to validate them. Mm -hmm. And to see if they match what you expect. What you expect. And also open PRs uh, for changes. Okay, um, and uh, I've, I've, I have the, uh, I'm, I'm thinking you have a lot of, uh, you have, a, uh, you have a lot of use cases for operators in mind. And if you, if you want to, if you want to write one in, in, in some, in some lines, um, don't hesitate to do it, do it rule, accept the pull request, I think. Um, such things as you said before, um, should I write an own operator, should I extend, extend another one? This could be a, a very, very important use case for end user, for, for developers of operators. So I, uh, I think one week ago I had a similar problem where I also wanted to do something and also try to find out if I should write the operator myself or if I should um, Let's, let's say this way, do a fork from another one. Mm -hmm. So this could also be a very valuable uh, use case for, for users. Okay, so, um, oops, yes. Um, do you have any other questions or, or comments or other things? Um, yes, then I think we're right in time. Um, thank you for your attendance. Um, the next meeting will be in about two weeks. So I hope then we'll, then we, we have to, to discuss the first draft. And yes, thank you for, thank, thank you for joining the meeting and have a nice evening or have a, yes, have a, have a, nice, have a good morning. Uh, However, this is COVID. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. bye.